بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد ونسلی اللہ رسول کریم دا پرپز آف دس سیشن از ٹو ڈسکرائب سم آسپیکٹس آف مینجمنٹ اینڈ لیڈرشپ ان اسلامک پرسپیکٹو اٹ از اے ٹریڈیشن ٹو ایویلویٹ ایگزٹنگ کانسیپٹس اور تھیریز بفور پریزنٹنگ اے نیو ون وین وی analyze the existing theories, we can conclude that they are based upon oppression, they are uh, based upon underpayment and implies are not treated as human being. And uh, there is a hierarchical structure It means there are many layers of management and the system is based upon the authority which is a motivating factor for those who possess it and they are using this authority to oppress their employees, their subordinates. And the assumption about Uh, the employees is that they are source of productivity. Employees are machines as other factors of production. Human re- relation movement assumes that the human aspect of work or organization should be taken into account. But their purpose is increase in productivity rather than welfare of employees. So how we can change that? First of all, we have to change the behavior. The behavior of managers, the behavior of employers. Second, we need a new structure of management, structure of organization. And We need to use authority as a supportive factor. So the answer is Islamic management theory. Let's look upon the shortcomings of the existing theories. For example, we have said that it is based upon oppression. Here there is an example, Anas radiallahu ta'ala an worked for Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years and he said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not speak any word of this appointment or sadness. He did not say why did you do that? Why did you not do that? So these phrases are telling us the treatment he was doing with his subordinate. And this chart is showing the gender wage gap in the developed countries, not to speak of developing countries where there is there is little equality in in gender and this data is about OECD countries most of them are developed countries and still there is a gender gap in these countries next take the example of the United Kingdom here uh, there is a huge gap as well The gap between the ethnic minority, it means the Asian and African people and the white people is about 22%. The, ja- the people from Bangladesh, they are receiving 20% less than their counterparts. As a whole, the people from Pakistan 
and Bangladeshi community, they are receiving the lowest maiden hourly pay in the United Kingdom. And this data has been provided by the UK government. And it is about 2018. Compared to that, Prophet ﷺ had a transaction with a Jew. When he was returning his goods, he ordered his companion to pay him more. And it was not the interest, it was a gift. It was in addition to what was the capital of that particular person. So the, it is equally applicable to um, the wages. So instead of underpayment as we are seeing from the data, Professor is paying more than what the person was uh, person was deserving. In human treatment, here there is an example. Zayd Raziyallah was a slave. He was gifted to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Since he was a boy, his father came to collect him. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, if Zayd is ready, then take him without any price. But Zayd Raziyallah refused to go with his father because he knew that Prophet is the most kind person. Therefore, he rejected the offer of his father and remained with the Prophet till the last breath. Hierarchical structure. If we look at the structure here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, directly speaking with Musa salam. and for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is speaking with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all other Prophets through Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam so there is one layer of management only and similarly Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was managing his affairs through teams at the occasion of the battle of trench he established teams of 10 people and they were assigned a certain job to complete however normally prophet sallallahu used to consult his team And then he used to make a decision. But at the occasion of the Battle of Ohad, he directly consulted with the people. And he made decision according to the suggestion he received from a common person. So there is no layer of management speaking directly to the a people to his subordinates. Now we are looking at fundamentals of Islamic management style, but they are not the exclusive, or they are not the exhaustive list. They are only some examples we have extracted from the lifestyle of. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was the best example and best examples in terms of a leader as well. In other words, he was the best leader. So, before looking at the principles, let's examine some of the assumptions about employees. 
For example, Islamic management theory says employees are human beings. Second, they are Muslims. Third, they are employees of the organization. Fourth, they have a role in the society to play. So let's examine their implications. When they are human beings, then managers need to treat them as a, as a human being. Then they are Muslims. There are certain rights of, of a Muslim. Therefore, Muslim employees have some rights. For example, every Muslim is supposed to, supposed to pray five times a day. Therefore, during the working time, Muslim employee supposed to pray and manager or Muslim manager need to allow him. Similarly, when fasting, fasting Muslim also deserves special treatment. Prophet says in one of the hadiths to the nearest effect that managers or the boss or leaders should lessen the burden of fasting person, fasting Muslim. In many Muslim countries, the practice is, uh, has been implemented. The working hours during Ramadan reduced from 8 hours to 6 hours. Third uh, assumption is about that being a human being, being a Muslim, then they are the employees of the organization. It implies that the managers supposed to take into account the humanity of the workers and their status as a Muslim into account before taking work, work out of them. And the fourth one, that they are the part of the society. This means that they should be taken work up to some extent. If the organization is offering overtime, for example, four hours or six hours, then employees are consuming their most of the time in the organization. They do not have time left for their own family, for the community where they are living, for the social activities. But Islam emphasizes that their social roles, role must be considered and um, organizations should ensure that the employee is fulfilling that role. Organizations are offering overtime because it is uh, financially uh, beneficial for them if they are hiring other people for the extra work then they have to pay extra taxes and extra benefits to other employees. Therefore, it is a cheaper option for them to offer overtime to existing employees. Although there is some benefit for employees as well, but uh, comparatively, the benefit of employer is greater than the, the benefit of employees. Because employees uh, do not find any extra time to serve his community, his family, etc. And we have we have example. Some people informed us that they were they are working in this country seven days a week, and their timings are so that when they go in the morning for work, their children they asleep. When they come back, 10 o'clock in the evening, the children already in the bed. So, they could not see their own children for the entire week. So, that is what the Islam is saying. That they should be taken only appropriate amount of work. Now, let us look at the prophetic 
style of management. First of all, Islamic management styles says that reward of work is not only in this world but as well as in the hereafter. For example, there is a hadith to the New Year's effect that if somebody is working and he gets tired, Allah SWT forgives his sins. So he is not only getting money or making money but at the same time his sins are forgiven. If somebody is making halal money, spending upon his family, this will be uh, considered as sadaqah, charity in his account. Second, the salaries should be paid before sweat gets dry. Normally, the practice is the employer is taking work for one month or for four nights or for, for one week and then he pays. Although the employee is making money every single day for the employer, but he is paying after one month and keeping this money in bank and bank is giving interest to him or profit to him. So he is making money upon the wages of employees. So the best practice should be to pay wages in advance. Since the employer is a rich person, he has the money to pay in advance, he can do it. And that is the recommendation of Islamic management style. The next one is kindness to subordinates. This hadith is saying to the nearest fact, anyone who has got three qualities shall be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection and he will be admitted into paradise. And of these three qualities, he is the one who is kind to his slaves, subordinates. The fourth one, managing mistakes. One companion came to Prophet and asked, how many times I should forgive my slave? Prophet replied to the nearest fact that you should forgive him 70 times a day. So that is the model, that is the approach of the Prophet If this kind of management style is implemented, then employees will be motivated and will be happy to work with the organization which is treating them like that. Fifth one, consider the past contribution of employees if they are making any mistake. For example, one of the companions of Prophet ﷺ sent a letter to his family in Makkah while the Prophet ﷺ was intending to attack Makkah and he was also trying to keep it secret to avoid the bloodshed. But this uh, uh, companion sent a letter to Makkah through a woman. Prophet ﷺ was informed about it through the revelation. And Prophet ﷺ sent a team to collect the letter. And the companion explained his uh, situation. He said, my family was alone and there is no one to look, to look, out, look after him, look after them. Therefore, I have sent this letter so that they can make arrangement about the situation, about the um, situation to come. Since this uh, companion took part in the first battle of Islam and disbelievers, therefore Prophet Sallallahu did not take any administrative action against him because of his past contribution for the sake of Islam. Finally, Prophet Sallallahu deputed a companion for a certain job and supplicated for him. So, the managers can do the same. 
all that are sunnah. If somebody is practicing one sunnah in this day and age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him the reward of 100 martyrs. And those martyrs who fought in the first battle uh, of Badr between Muslims and non-Muslims. Now, I'm going to look at some of the material I have produced regarding Islamic management theory. And the purpose of this to describe that there is a sufficient material available to introduce Islamic management in the institutes of higher education and in other uh, educational institutes. I have wrote an article. The title of this article was Planning in the Islamic Tradition, the Case of Hijra Expedition in 2009. So that was about the planning of Prophet Later on, I have produced this book, Responsibilities of Managers. On right hand side, you can see the contents of this book. There are about 200 ahadis um, regarding responsibilities of managers, responsibilities of employees, and out of them, uh, we have implicated for the managers that how they can implement these uh, practices of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their organizations. Then um, I have collected about 100 hadith about sales and marketing. And here um, they have been um, categorized into famous four P's of marketing, product, price, place and promotion. In addition to that, another P was added that P is, P is for process because certain processes in Islam are not allowed. For example, people used to exchange inferior products with superior products. Prophet ﷺ advised them to sell the inferior product and then buy the superior one. This is called the process. And there are other aspects of processes. For example, the product should be brought in the market because people used to buy out of market cheaper from those who were bringing uh, the uh, merchandise from other countries. And it was not allowed in Islam. Similarly, for the managerial functions, uh, four books uh, were produced about uh, planning, organizing, leading and controlling. And these have been combined in this book, which we can say the principles of Islamic management. The name of the book is Managerial Thoughts of the Prophet The book consists of five parts. First part is the introduction and four parts are about the managerial functions and they have been accompanied with the case studies. Then uh, the article I have written in 2009 about planning that was enhanced with other instances and they have compiled in this book. Prophet Muhammad as a planning expert. In the article we have used only Hijra as an example but in this book we have also included seven other major events uh, which happened in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we have analyzed nine major events in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are 
seven major battles and the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and the expedition of Hijra. And out of these, we have identified many themes are many managerial themes which have been combined in this book. The name of the book is Management Practices of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And contents of this book include which have been extracted from the nine books we have produced. Strategic Management, Change Management, Crisis Management, not for profit marketing, innovation, information management, business ethics, motivation theory, decision making, human resource management, financial management, negotiation, planning, expeditions, resistance management, risk management, and project management. All of these were expanded into the forms of books to include other material because uh, these topics were accumulated in only a single chapter in the previous book but they have been combined and in, 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 enhanced in these four or five books for example strategic management a full book was produced transformation strategy of the profit information management strategy financial management strategy motivation strategy of the profit and I am still working on other topics so that more aspect of the life of the profit should be brought, brought um, forward and then uh, we have worked on some related themes for example this book is about key managerial decisions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The managerial decisions have been categorized into four categories. Preemptive decisions, concurrent decisions, reactive decisions, hybrid decisions. Preemptive decisions are those which are made for the future benefit. Concurrent decisions are those which are dealing with the current situation current problem. Reactive decisions are made where there is a problem and it needs a resolution and a decision is made to resolve them. Hybrid decisions are those which contains some aspects of preemptive decisions and reactive decisions. And each of these have been accompanied with a case study. Then I have examined existing management theories and they have been combined in this book Prophet Muhammad and evolution of management theory here we have uh, we have evaluated and compared the scientific management theory with the thoughts of the Prophet system theory classical management theory contingency theory and human relation management theory. We have found that all these principles which have been discovered by these scientists were practiced long time ago by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So all these theories were coined by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But unfortunately they have not been discovered. Now we can say that the innovator of these the theories, inventor of these theories was Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then uh, this book was produced about the selection of the leaders of different expeditions by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ten of these have been selected and their contribution have been analyzed. So after that, a model was extracted and it includes some personal qualities of the people. Prophet Sallallahu selected as, uh, as selected as uh, team leaders and there are some organizational characteristics. 
and one of the major contribution of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that he has prepared his successor otherwise the entire umma could be in trouble if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, did not nominate did not um, you know prepare his successor and similarly problem solving is one of the key uh, capability of managers these days this book is all about it and how prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressed uh, different problems and it contains uh, 13 uh, different chapters and out of them prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used 12 different approaches to resolve different problems and the first chapter is uh, presenting the framework for analysis of each of his problem so after that uh, we can say that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam resolved th- problems through uh, different approaches not only a single approach and then um, a book was produced about the managerial implication of five pillars of islam we know that islam is based upon five pillars but they have also managerial implications for example we have identified these 11 aspects are 11 managerial aspects out of five pillars of islam for example um, there is the element of strategic management human resource management marketing functions of management planning organizing leading and directing management of finance risk management international management interpersonal skills change management process management and outsourcing and this means that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have given as given us the five pillars not to please allah subhanahu wa taala not to uh, perform them but also learn from them as a manager so for the sake of conclusion we can say that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best leader islamic management theory is the best theory it should be uh, studied it should be introduced in the educational institutes thank you very much for your time may allah subhanahu wa taala enable us to understand and practice the islamic management at all levels of organization and all types of organizations i take your permission with these words wa akhir dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin